Hi everybody, welcome to biology class. In today's class, we are going to discuss some some more functions of liver. Okay, the functions that are performed by liver. Okay, some extra points we are going to discuss, which are which are very important for NTSC type of questions. Okay, so liver is a vital organ, right? Okay, it is it is the busiest organ. Okay, it is the busiest organ. Something or the other, it will be performing. Okay, so liver, the liver performs the first functions. Okay, first functions we will take it is uh, metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. And in all these functions, we are going to see under certain headings. Under certain headings. Okay, so first, first is metabolism of carbohydrates. Metabolism of carbohydrates. Okay, in this metabolism of carbohydrates, there are some some more processes. Okay, some some more processes. They are what? They are the conversion of glucose into glycogen the conversion of glucose into glycogen i told you in the previous video right so first the glucose the glucose which is absorbed is going to be converted into glycogen the extra glucose gets converted into glycogen this is the first process in metabolism of carbohydrate okay glucose is going to be converted into glycogen and there is a special process known as glycogenesis glycogenesis okay so genesis genesis normally means synthesis genesis the word normally means synthesis synthesis so so extra glucose in our diet is going to be converted into Glycogen. Glycogen is what? Stored form of glucose. It is stored form of glucose. Okay. So, if at all, in our diet, in our diet, if there is less sugar content, if, if there is less sugar, then this stored form of glucose is again going to be broken down into glucose. Okay, the stored form of glucose that is glycogen is again going to be broken down into glucose and thereby this glucose gives us energy. Okay, and thereby the glucose again gives us energy. So, stored form of glucose is what? Glycogen. So, again glycogen. Glycogen is again broken down into glucose. Okay, and this process is known as glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis. Okay, lysis normally means breaking down. Breaking down. Okay, the word lysis generally means breaking down. So this is how this is how the first process. This is how the first process takes place in metabolism of carbohydrate. And the next process, and the next process is okay. And the next process that we are going to see is if at all glucose is formed from other substances other than carbohydrate, other than carbohydrate, like proteins fats okay proteins fats okay these are what these are other than these are substances other than carbohydrates okay if synthesis of glucose takes place if synthesis of glucose takes place other than carbohydrate other than carbohydrate carbohydrate like proteins 
amino acids okay proteins amino acids and fats they are substances other than carbohydrate if conversion of glucose takes place if conversion of glucose takes place by these substances okay by this substances okay we call it as that process known as gluconeogenesis 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 is a process okay in which these substances like proteins fats and amino acids other than carbohydrates okay they are going to be converted into glucose this process is known as gluconeogenesis okay gluconeogenesis these terms are very important for ntsc type of questions okay next so all this all this processes all these processes okay. so all these processes are involved all these processes are involved in metabolism of carbohydrates okay and the second and the second function that is performed by the liver is metabolism of fats metabolism of fats okay so this is very simple we know that fatty acids fatty acids and glycerol glycerol okay fatty acids and glycerol they are going to be converted into fats they are going to be converted into fats and this process of conversion is known as lipogenesis lipogenesis okay again again this fat again this fat is going to be broken down into fatty acids and glycerol again it will get broken down into fatty acids and glycerol and this process is known as lipolysis lipolysis so this is the process okay this process takes place in the metabolism of fats this process takes place in the metabolism of fats okay some of the fatty products some of the fatty products from the digester uh, digester uh, digestion some of the fatty products from the digestion okay which arrive into the liver are going to be converted into fatty substance known as cholesterol okay cholesterol this is also one important function performed by the liver okay so the fatty products that come from the digested part of our food okay into the liver this liver converts this fatty substances into cholesterol okay cholesterol this is also very important function and the next one is known as next one is metabolism of proteins metabolism of proteins okay in metabolism of proteins there are various processes there are various processes like okay so in metabolism of proteins there are various processes okay like the processes like transamination transamination okay what is transamination the transfer of amino group the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to another okay from one amino acid to another that is known as transamination the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to other so here the transfer of amino group amino group from one amino acid to other to other okay so that is known as transamination trans means what change okay changing of amino group changing of amino group is known as transamination so here is the definition the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to other why in order to produce in order to produce new amino acids 
okay why they will transfer in order to produce in order to produce new amino acids okay in order to produce new amino acids which are very important for us so that process is known as transamination and the next process that takes place in the metabolism of proteins are okay they are deamination 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 is what the extra amino acids okay the extra amino acids see here amino acids are proteinaceous substances okay so the extra amino acids or the extra proteins that are present in our body they are going to be converted into they are going to be converted into non required substances non required substances and they are broken down in our body and removed out so that is deamination so so here that okay so the extra amino acids and proteins they have to be converted into non required material and destroyed in our body and removed that is known as deamination so here extra amino acids and proteins destroyed and destroyed and removed from the body from the body is known as deamination is known as deamination so these are the two processes that takes place in the metabolism of proteins metabolism of proteins and the third one and the third one so the the, th the third one is uh, see here in our body if there are extra amino acids and proteins they need to be converted into less toxic substances okay see here uh, in simple way in simple way in simple way extra amino acids and proteins they they get converted into ammonia they get broken down and convert into ammonia okay this ammonia is very toxic substance this ammonia is very toxic okay so this ammonia is very toxic if they are accumulated in our body okay that will lead to fatal or it may also lead to death so this ammonia is very toxic and they have to be reduced into less toxic substances known as urea less toxic substances known as urea so here we can add this point or else we can write we can write as separate point also okay the function of liver separate point we can write it as a fourth fourth number so liver helps in conversion of ammonia conversion of ammonia which is very toxic substance into urea into urea so ammonia is very toxic highly toxic and urea is less toxic urea is less toxic so this process is done by liver this process is done by liver okay so the fourth function performed by the liver we will take it as conversion of ammonia conversion of ammonia into urea conversion of ammonia into urea and this reaction or it is done through a cycle known as ornithin cycle ornithin cycle the reaction that takes place to convert this toxic ammonia into less toxic urea is known as ornithin cycle or else this is also given a term this is also given a term known as 
Krebs, Henley, okay, Krebs, Henley, cycle, okay, Krebs, Henley, cycle, named after the scientist. This Ornithine cycle is also known as Krebs, Henley, cycle, okay, named named after the scientist. So this process is taking uh, is going to take place where in the liver. This process takes place in the liver. And the fifth function that we are going to see is that we are going to see is uh, the liver forms. So the next function that is um, the embryo that is the embryo that is growing in the mother's womb. Okay, for that embryo, this liver this liver functions to um, produce RBC known as erythro erythropoiesis okay erythropoiesis liver functions to produce RBC erythropoiesis that we call it as erythropoiesis okay when it is taking place in the embryonic life it takes place in the embryonic life embryonic life okay so in embryonic life liver acts as erythropoiesis erythropoiesis that means production of rbc okay product production of rbc or else we can write it as site of rbc production site of rbc production in embryonic life in embryonic life okay the function we can also write as site of rbc production in embryonic life okay after the after the birth of the baby this job this job erythropoiesis is taken over by the stem cells after the birth of the baby this job of performing erythropoiesis is taken over by bone marrow bone marrow bone marrow so okay this takes place where after the birth okay and that means bone marrow they produce rbc and when it is when the embryo is in mother's womb okay the liver performs the liver only produces rbc okay the next function that liver is going to function uh, liver okay the function of liver next one we are going to see is thermoregulation thermoregulation okay we know that all the cells okay cellular metabolism they produce what heat they produce what heat so liver is the organ which will distribute equal heat in our body equal heat in our body so thermoregulation means what regulation of heat regulation of heat so equal heat is maintained equal heat is maintained in our body by the organ known as liver okay equal heat is maintained in our body by the help of this liver this is this is also one important function and the next one okay and liver it also it also stores it also stores fat soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins okay what are the fat soluble vitamins they are vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and k okay so okay so liver also stores fat soluble vitamins what are the fat soluble vitamins they are vitamins a vitamins d vitamins e and k it also stores the stress elements stress elements what are those stress elements they are iron and copper iron and copper are the stress elements and it also stores excess water 
excess water okay the excess water that is there in our body is stored in the liver thereby regulates the volume of blood by storing it it regulates the volume of blood it regulates the volume of blood by storing the excess water okay excess water okay and the next function that we are going to discuss is it helps liver helps in the synthesis of plasma protein so it helps in the synthesis of plasma proteins plasma proteins okay plasma proteins like what are those albumin 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 regulates it regulates the water content it regulates the water content in the blood in blood or fluid blood or fluid so albumin is necessary for our body and next one is next one is thrombin next one is thrombin okay these are plasma proteins plasma proteins so in synthesis of plasma proteins albumin is very important albumin is very important okay so in plasma proteins albumin is important okay and the next function performed by the liver is uh, they act as clotting factor they act as clotting factor they act as clotting factor by generating what by generating fibrinogen by generating fibrinogen and prothrombin 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 okay fibrinogen and prothrombin these are the proteins that help in blood clotting these are the proteins that help in blood clotting and heparin and heparin okay this is anti coagulant we call it as anti coagulant okay whenever there is no need of blood clotting this protein is going to gather the and okay it uh, it helps to reduce the risk of blood clotting so this is anti coagulant anti coagulant which is the heparin okay heparin is known as anti coagulant okay so the next function that we are going to see is liver also detoxifies detoxifies the drugs or many harmful substances that are present in our body so it uh, it helps in detoxification okay and the very important function done by liver is production of bile production of bile okay bile is the only digestive enzyme without any en digestive juice without any enzymes bile is the only digestive juice without any enzyme important point please note okay so bile is the only digestive juice without enzymes means there is no enzymes in it okay so if we see bile bile contains bile salts bile salts and bile pigments and bile pigments bile pigments these bile salts are very these bile salts are very important in emulsification these bile salts are um, they help in emulsification help in emulsification emulsification of fats 
emulsification of fats means what the breaking down of large fat globules into tiny bits breaking down of large fat globules into tiny bits is known as emulsification and the next one is bile pigments okay bile pigments there are two types of bile pigments okay there are billy rubin or billy rubin okay so the bile pigments are billy rubin and billy burdin okay billy rubin and billy burdin and these are yellow color pigments these okay they are their color is yellow color yellow color pigment and this okay this billy burdin and billy rubin they are excreted in the fecal matter they are excreted in the fecal matter or in other words we can say it is okay our fecal the fecal matter is yellowish in color due to the presence of billy rubin and billy burdin billy rubin and billy burdin okay so as i told you the, the bile produces bile salts and bile pigments okay and bile is also having basic in nature so the ph of bile okay the ph of bile is around 8 ph of bile is around 8 okay so the stomach stomach is highly acidic and whatever the food substances are uh, released from the stomach into the duodenum okay they are highly acidic and this bile is going to this bile is going to neutralize the acid okay neutralize the acidic condition of the stomach okay and bile secretion takes place where in the duodenum right in the duodenum duodenum so bile ph is what 8 bile ph is 8 and it is secreted into the duodenum and this provides an environment for the enzymes that are present in the intestine to act okay this provides a proper environment for the enzymes to act in the intestine okay so these were all the functions of liver these were all the functions of liver and all these functions okay quickly we are going to put it in a brain map so that easily we can understand easily we can understand so this is the brain map this is the brain map okay the functions of liver okay here metabolism of carbohydrate in that we saw conversion of glucose into glycogen and even the non um, carbohydrate substances like fats proteins and um, vital uh, amino acids they are going to convert into glucose so all those process we see so in metabolism of carbohydrate and the next one is metabolism of fats metabolism of fats fatty acids and glycerol they are going to be converted into fats and that process we call it as lipogenesis and fats are again going to convert into fatty acids and glycerol okay that is lipolysis and the next one is metabolism of proteins in this we saw many processes okay like uh, transamination and deamination okay and it also liver also helps in conversion of the toxic ammonia into less toxic urea and the next function is it is the site of rbc production in embryo liver acts as produce production of rbc whereas when the embryo or the baby when it is okay when it is given birth this function is taken over by the bone marrow okay the job is taken over by the bone marrow and the next one is thermo regulation that means equal heat or equal temperature in our body is distributed by the help of liver okay cellular metabolism they produce what heat so that heat is regulated by the liver and the next function is it stores fat soluble vitamins like a d e k and even it stores uh, the water extra uh, excess water in our body is stored by the liver in order to regulate the volume of blood okay next function here it is it also synthesizes 
synthesizes plasma proteins like albumin okay and the uh, fibrinogens okay and the next function is detoxification liver acts as detoxifying organ okay all the drugs that are present in our body they are going to be detoxified by the help of liver and the next function is production of bile okay production of bile this is very important for sslc examinations okay we saw there are bile uh, pigments and bile salts bile salts are for emulsification of fats and bile pigments okay these are yellowish in color and excreted in the fecal matter okay so these were the functions that we saw so in today's video we saw all the functions so please note all these functions thank you children have a nice day